Am I allowed? I, I, I. <laughs> That's what happens if Urkel uh, was exposed <laughs> to the surface of Mars. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi tabletop miniature skirmish game from Mantic Games. And now, here are your hosts Rob Harper and Jack Fike. I am your announcer, William Randolph Wintergreen. Welcome to the 41st episode of Dead Zone the Podcast for mid-September 2015. In this episode, we have a special interview with Community Pat, and we talk about Warpath. It's here. As always, you can go to deadzonegame.podbean.com to see all the pictures, or you can go to youtube.com slash c slash deadzonethepodcast for the video version of this show. And now we're on to the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dead Zone Podcast 41. And uh, my name is Jack. And I'm Rob. And what do we have today? Well, the the floodgates have opened, the dams have, the levees have broke, the the Kings of War Kickstarter has, has been fulfilled, the Dungeon Saga's just on a boat, a slow boat from China, and uh, Dreadball Extreme is done, so now it's a, the wave of Dead Zone and Warpath has come from Mantic, so the next three or four episodes is going to be all all about news. So we'll have a lot of news coming through in the next while. And it starts on this one. Ready for the news? I am ready for the news. So we do have a little update from for the Infestation Kickstarter from Dead Zone. Infestation and in the news. Infestations, yes. And it's uh, Jake has been streamlining the game, and uh, so he's working on it. There's rumors that he wasn't going to be working on this new version, but he is. And uh, We had heard that kind of on the DL. Yeah, So, but I didn't see that wasn't true. Or things have changed. That's true. But we're, we're we're sort of we're peripheral, but not insiders. Who knows what yeah. kind of internal wranglings That's have right. happened? Maybe he was demanding more money. And <laughs> it was trade negotiations. Maybe he has a child hostage. We don't know. We're not sure. Ronnie does have few children, so hopefully they're back with their mother. Let's let, let's go on record. Let's take a bold stance and say let's hope all of Ronnie's uh, immediate family are in good health and, and safe and, and Jake sound. Isn't holding any of them in his basement. We didn't need to say that. Oh, we didn't need to say that. <laughs> I went too far. We'll cut all this out. <laughs> We're not cutting it out. Uh, yeah, he wants to keep the game the same feel, but speeding it up, which is that's kind of cool. That that makes sense because it's uh it's supposed to be a quick skirmish game. And sometimes it does get bogged down in rolls. And how often, even now, we have to look through, okay, what's the, okay, well, this and this. We've had plenty of those discussions in the last little bit. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, basically streamlining our own games through house rules, but also uh, offering suggestions to the people at large, us in our community. And uh, maybe Jake's, uh, you know, tapped into that. Oh, for sure. He, he has his uh, quirk-worthy blog, and he, anytime you, he posts something, people comment, he'll, he'll respond. Like, he's really good for interaction, so. And he wants to make the game faster, more intuitive, but still true to the original ideals, and that's really what uh, Ronnie said to us at Adepta. Yes, yes. And uh, they hope to have the beta, a beta out in the next few weeks, and we'll to see how that works. A few weeks? Theoretically. That, uh... Well, that, a beta rules is... It, it, he, they're still working on it, that's for sure. And that's interesting. It, the new focus will be on uh, really quick and more violent, which, uh... Yeah, that's remember when we first got the game, they said, uh, don't expect any models to last quick, it's going to be a lot of deaths, and then when we played it, we're like, that really didn't happen, you know? So I think uh, they're trying to go back to that, where it's just like, oh, dead, 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 you know? I, I, I can see that. I, I can see where, because it was the first, that was the first set of rules, and if it did had a lot of playtesting in tournaments, and yes. people at homes now. And if it didn't live up to exactly what they wanted in the speed factor, I can see that that's something that uh, they want because you want an exciting, you want an exciting, fast victories, mm -hmm. especially if it's gonna, if they want to make tournament play. And that's why I say they want the smaller game played under an hour now, which I think ours are mostly an hour anyway. But yeah, but we're we're yeah. And clear rules, exciting victory conditions. That's an interesting comment. Exciting victory conditions. That sounds like missions are definitely either changing or getting kicked out or something. Something's changing there for sure. Again, I, I, hopefully our discussions that we've had on this very podcast are at least little, little, causing little ripples, anyways, because we uh, most of those things that you've just brought up, we've had, uh, we've we've touched on. So. That's good. Yeah, we're, we're, we've tapped into the zeitgeist, I believe. Look forward to getting those beta rules, hopefully, in the next few weeks. And uh, we'll have to pester uh, Pat 
Speaking of Pat, more on that later. But uh, nice tease. Ah, uh-huh, it's a tease. Nice tease. You do that for in front of a commercial though. If you want to be pro, like if you. We're not to... doing it in front of a commercial because we have more news. Uh, more news. Yep. And I'm sure by now everybody knows this, but uh, on uh, September 21st, which should be the day this episode's coming out, Warpath is coming to Kickstarter. Wow. It was promised in last December, then it was said maybe next year, but they went, F- we're doing it now. I swore. I gotta beat that. <laughs> we're doing it live! So they, uh, yep, it's it's uh, se- it's gonna be a short one. September 21st to October 11th, so it's another one of those, just like Infestation. Just like Infestation was, which happened while we were at uh, Depticon and Pretty much, yeah. And uh, we have some cool, they have a lot of cool concept photo, uh, pictures, so you can go to uh, deadzonegame.podbean.com to uh, see these cool concepts. This one's of a uh, dropship with uh, with enforcers popping out the back with some uh, jet bikes es- escorting them. And right off the hop, it's showcasing what's going to make this different from Dead Zone. You know, you, you don't see a couple guys hiding in some buildings. You don't see no, it's full you troops. See uh, isn't... A, like a handful of troops. You're seeing vehicles. You're seeing fleets of vehicles, heavy weapons, and mass destruction. It's uh, they're not bearing the lead on what this is going to be for. Yeah, for sure. And the philosophy for this is uh, simple to learn, like all their games. Uh, fast games, fun, and allow to scale your games from small battles to fully fledged planetary invasions. So it's, it's pretty much the step between. Uh, it's going to be the step between Dead Zone. Then there's something called uh, uh, Warpath uh, Firefight, which is kind of in the middle, and then Warpath's full-size huge battle. Still don't know how I feel about Firefight. Firefight, they're saying it's... Uh, we'll so, go... some, sometimes I think, oh, good idea, sometimes I don't. It's uh, something I have to come to terms with, I think. We'll, we'll get on to the why, what that is. First, uh, for, for Warpath, though, it's uh, going to be different for Dead Zone, obviously. It's going to be... Uh, we've been discussing the beta, and it's... Even a new beta's come out now that uh, slightly changes things, but... Uh, the uh, in Dead Zone, every miniature is independent and it's tight, claustrophobic. Where uh, Warpath's obviously going to be huge battles and uh, specialists, along with uh, commands. Like all the commands are going to be majorly important. It's going to be a lot more about commanding your guys to do things. And uh, so, something that uh, on a s- battle that scale it seems to blend in more with the field than it does in, in Dead, Dead Zone. Zone. Exactly. This makes a lot more sense about commanders and yes, because in this fit, this you will have you guys on the ground commanding a squad. Plus, you got the guy in the sky telling the commanders what to do, and it makes a lot more sense in this. Where I thought it never meant much sense in there. No, when you're having elite uh, squads like uh, your, your your top men, a, a small small teams don't necessarily need a general. Try yeah, exactly. In general, when you pay attention, with his shiny boots yeah. and his uh, his fruit salad medals on his chest, barking orders that you know, I I I, I do think that Warpath is going to be um, more uh, a a different game, more suited to, and I don't want to like call out a specific community, but to to people who. 40k. Uh, 40k players are gonna, I think, are going to enjoy. Well, that's what that firefight is. Because in 40k, you peel miniatures off, and that's what firefight's gonna be. Where the even bigger one, there isn't really a well, other than like drop zone commander at like what's that six millimeter? You don't get games that are like this as much. That's what the firefight. That's why there is firefight. That's totally focusing on. 40K. Oh, okay. That's what I was gonna discuss later, but yeah, that's why they're, they that firefight exists. And it, people demanded it. That's when they put out the betas. People were like, but we want to do this and this and this. And they're like, okay, so you want us to do a version of 40K? They're like, okay, if you want it, we'll do it. <laughs> Why not? So this Kickstarter is going to focus on funding two rule books: the Warpath rulebook and the Warpath Firefight rulebook. So it's going to be two separate rule books, which is cool too. So if you really don't want to play Firefight, it's not cluttering up your book at all. Or the other way around, if you just want to play Firefight. And then we got some more promo shots. This one's of a uh, Forge Father getting uh, rumbled by some uh, <laughs> some uh, enforcers. Uh, I, I, you, you say that, but if you look in the foreground and background, those enforcers got uh, way more than they can handle. Uh, but they got the planes and the, they got the flyers up top, though. Yeah, but they do have like, like yeah, it's good. Well, that's why you fight, I guess. That's why you fight just just, just <laughs> so you can use your planes to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why I fight. to wipe out uh, people whose stature isn't the same as yours. And you can tell that they love the dwarves because this other shot's also the dwarves. Uh, they're beating up. I think there's Sterians there in the background. Yeah, that's an Yeah, thing. for sure. So the dwarves are beating somebody else up. Aggressors. Now, if someone can answer me why when I'm watching YouTube videos, especially, because uh, right now, uh, Kings of War, we're kind of, we're, we're toying with building armies, and I've been looking at Kings of War uh, tutorials, how to build the new matres, how to do this, how to, how come our friends across the pond have to call dwarves and go, dwarves? Dwarves? Why, why is that? They all seem to just like they, they just jump on that word. 
Hmm. I don't know. I've never really noticed it. <laughs> Once you hear it, you'll never unhear it. I, I'm, a, I'm sorry to have done well, that If you're to you. from the UK, why do you call them dwarves? <laughs> Just asking. Well, they're Forge Fathers. They're not dwarves. Oh. So more on uh, Warpath Firefight. And uh, we were discussing already, but it's it's alternative to uh, old school 40k. It's, I guess 40k, is like, like now it's got that creep where bigger and bigger armies. But in, I think, 6th edition or somewhere in there, it was more like this is focusing on smaller armies... Platoon to company level as opposed to armies, but not single squad like that. So it's right in the middle, right? And the individual casual, casualty removal, which a lot of people wanted. More detail, less abstraction of stats and abilities. A lot of people were complaining about Warpath. It's almost like a, a Euro game where you're just moving. It doesn't even have to be there. Like, you know? Too, too uh, f- free-flowing. Too, yeah, too abstract. Like, like uh, this. Yeah, a little artsy-fartsy for uh, yeah. community where this that, is... that likes mechanics, that yeah. likes specific... Mm-hmm. Nuts and bolts. There, there are some people who can't enjoy something unless they can get into minutia. Yeah, that's true, too. And this is going to have more cinematic cinematic games, so I assume it will probably have heroes and stuff, too. Whereas Warpath is about the squads, the units, it doesn't matter about heroes. This, I bet, will have heroes. And uh, feels more sci-fi with focus on shooting and advanced technologies. Emphasis on suppressive fire, tactical formations, combined arms, and that's where the warpath comes in that separates it from the dead zone. And uh, terrain's going to be majorly important, which is kind of interesting. But the biggest interesting is going to be designed by uh, Mark Latham, who's uh, he was in charge of Warhammer 40k. Oh, Mark Latham. Big deal! And he headed up the White Dwarf team. I, I don't know who he is. Uh, yeah, but I, it's, you know, it's they actually stole some well, another person from uh, Games Workshop. All these people... Like, uh, White Dwarf team, it's probably similar as, uh, Jake Thornton originally started as an editor of White Dwarf. Ronnie was, like, a head of some department at GW, so it just seems like as they leave GW, they go to these other companies, like, uh, Warlord is all run by old GW guys, and, like, so they got another one. So it's good that he's, he knows exactly what he's talking about, because he was involved with 40k back in the day when it was good. So he can, uh, ha- he, he knows that flavor, he knows that feel, mm-hmm. and that's and what if he want. can inject that into yeah. this game... To make it as fun as we never played. 40K, no, we never played forty k ever. No. So like, we, I don't see the point of it. But <laughs> we don't have any idea what what it was that made Maybe, rabid yeah. fans. That made. But obviously, he was connected. Yeah. Hopefully, he can and get he'll, that he he also probably can see what changed in forty k that people don't like. Right. So, Whereas he can ho- hopefully distill everything yeah, down and exactly. make something that we might even want to try. Yeah, well, it'd be fun to try just to try it out, anyways. I, I can't, I can't afford to. Get well, we're gonna have, much. we already have all these models, especially for firefight. We have more than enough models for firefight. Warpath, maybe not so much, but firefight for sure have them. And uh, yeah, so it's he said it. He uh, said that he's gonna make sure every model mo- matters. So casualty re- removal, positioning, variation of weaponry and equipment are all important. Uh, that does sound like the minutia yeah. that the and detailed rules for unit interaction, considering more free form. Uh, freeform approach, so you don't have to be in rank and file kind of thing. Uh, more detail for weapon types and special rules. It's I think in 40k also you can really load out your guys, and I think this is going to focus more on that, where it's not like, okay, this team has laser rifles, and this team is this, you could choose, okay, he's got, you know, once it's like you say, minutia. People, some people are really into that. And true line of sights, and pro model hits, and improved terrain occupying rules, and but we're still using the Warpath's order system, which is, that order system seems to be what they're really hanging Warpath on. Like, that's going to be the main thing. I, I would like to see that they keep all the Mantic uh, games that they can in a similar vein, a similar flavor, similar everything, so that there's uh, ease, that there's no barrier to move between games, but also it has the same flair, because we enjoy... We enjoy the way Mantic's doing things, and that's that's something that, that would make it easier for us to go, yeah, let's try. Let's well, that's go. the best thing I like, especially about Kings of War and so hopefully Warpath, is it's just so simple. Like it, To get into it, it's very low barrier for like rules-wise, and it sounds like the new Dead Zone's going to be the same. So we can only hope. Simple is easy. We're not... The minutia is not definitely not what we're into, but we can definitely see other people being into that. Yes, definitely. So before we get into... Uh, a lot more pictures and stuff we'll go through. We'll take a short break and we'll hear our station identification from Mantic. See, that's how you do a tease. <laughs> you have been listening to the Dead Zone Podcast with your hosts Jack Fike and Rob Harper. The Dead Zone Podcast is dedicated to Dead Zone, the tabletop miniature game by Mantic Games. Visit the Madman at games.com. 
Hi, this is Pat, North American Community Manager for Mantic Games, and you are listening to Dead Zone, the podcast. And we're back. So we got lots of pictures, including a picture that uh, of enforcers, but the important thing in this picture is the plagues that are threatening them. You may notice these plague. Those are new plague troops. They're saying they're going to be hard plastic warpath plague troops. More plague for you to paint, Jack. Well, I'm seeing I'm seeing some plague dogs that are are slightly different. It looks like the tails and heads are a bit modular. And to look at the spines on all those guys, they're like the the, the, the type the type threes are are. I assume warpath's going to be a lot. Type threes are going to be very important in it, so they're going to have to fill out the types for that. They've got the, the same uh, apparel that the zombies have. On yes, them. that's why I was the first time I thought they were so, zombies. So it, 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 again, it blends the world. It makes everything this like it makes everything coherent. Coherent, a, a very distinct, lived-in world. And I, they're they're knocking out of the park in, in that regard for me. And I also like to. It shows the the flyer there, the actual scale of the flyer. Yes. We find that we've never really seen it with a guy with like a real model next to it, and it looks very cool. And more pictures. We have a a concept of a very Cylon-looking uh, peacekeeper. Now, see, that is Battlestar Galactica the way it should be. His helmet looks just like a Cylon, but I think it's just the way it's painted. It's just a regular peacekeeper with a shield, but the way it's painted up, he looks you like had, a Cylon. You add the the red in the visor. You yeah. add that little that little, uh, little Spartan stri- yeah. type uh, thing on top. You know what? I wouldn't be able to help myself. They would they would be chrome. Oh yeah, that, sure that guy cool. would be chrome. I, and I now would... that I know that somebody's done. Remember, we we're going to do our Styrians on chrome. Somebody else did something else on chrome with spray paint, and he said it worked great. Because so I thought it would destroy the details, but he said no, nope, it worked great. So that was our fear. Next, the, yeah, so the next peacekeepers might be all chromed out. So we went with a, like a worn metal, like mm-hmm. a Terminator after. I was kind of going for like bronze, but but chromed out peacekeepers. Mm-hmm. That that would be that'd be garish. Yes, it would be pretty garish, but I like it, and it'd be easy to do for your whole team. Especially if you get Warpath. Especially if they look like Cylons. And they also have a great shot of the jet bike painted up, finally. Once again, a little garish for me. There's a little too much red on it, I think. I like my I like my vehicles to be nice, solid gray. Uh, that is not uh, a tactical no, it looks camouflaged. Like... It looks like you and a bunch of your other 20-year-old friends are going to go down there and meet other people <laughs> dressed up. Track day. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, they're going to do some drifting. They're going to do a little... It uh, does look like a race bike. A little street racing, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's the Tokyo Drift version of the Enforcer jet bike. Did we just sound incredibly old? No, I think we're on the... We're on the we're fast and furious right here. That's okay. <laughs> okay, yes. And then we got tons of shots from every angle of the interceptor, the plane. And it's uh, it's cool looking. Once again, they've done that coherent paint job for them all. And that's the one we saw the prototype for that you Long time ago, emailed yeah. me that we had to keep secret. Yep, we knew about this for a while. Yeah, but, uh, and I kind of tried to spill the beans one show, and Rob was like, no. I out every time. Because uh, we, we we have a track record of anything that we've heard or seen or done in holding confidence, we have yet to even make no. one single slip up. Remember that, people. You can tell us secrets. And Mantic, if you need a beta test rule, uh, if a rules team or information or anything like that, we'd be glad to help. Happy to help. Yeah. And it would be under our hats. Nothing would get out. <laughs> even even if I doffed my cap thusly, it Jack would stay. Jack could try to get it out, but I would yeah. edit it out. Don't worry. Oh. So, once again, we'll take another short break here. We'll hear from our friends at Countercharge. Countercharge. Countercharge is the first podcast totally dedicated to the game Kings of War. Join your hosts Andrew, Mark, and Rob as they delve into the world of Mantica and bring you in-depth coverage of all things Kings of War. You can find us on iTunes and at OhioHammer.com, a proud member of the Ohio Hammer Network of Podcasts. Welcome back to the Dead Zone Podcast. And now, the Chop Shop with Community Pat. And welcome back from that commercial. Um, Now, uh, long overdue, is another uh, uh, Chop Shop with our our bestie, our inside man, uh, Community Pat. We have ourselves an interview, and we're going to be discussing the new Warpath Kickstarter, as well as uh, whatever else that... uh, you, the audience, uh, had uh, questions about. We've uh, we've polled the audience, and uh, we're going to get to it right now. How's it going, guys? Welcome, Pat. 
Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me on again. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we did uh, get some questions. We were going to surprise you with some questions here. Oh, so. I did see that though. Just <laughs> <laughs> I did tag you in the post, so it was all right. I'd I, give you a heads up. <laughs> I will try to answer as much as I can. Yeah, I assume most of them are like weird ones that you're like, I have no idea. But yeah, <laughs> we'll get into that in a bit. First, uh, let's talk about Warpath. Yes, Kickstarter went off today. Uh, I've been a little bit busy, so I haven't had a chance to catch up on it again. So I don't know where we're sitting. 175,000 as of about five minutes ago. Oh, nice. Yep, just broke through to get the uh, Forge Father tank, which uh, I'm very excited about. <laughs> yeah, that thing, when I got the, uh, when I got sent that picture, I was like, oh, look at that thing. Yeah, and uh, we already have the flyer coming to us, so it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to, very excited. Uh, yep, now the question is, uh, which armies to pick? Yes. Right definitely. now they're offering the uh, Enforcers, the Forge Fathers, and the Veermen. So it's, yeah. a, it's pretty good selections here. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, one of the things is that we are focusing on those three right now because those are the ones that have the most hard plastic. Yeah. So the only thing to flesh them out would be vehicles. Yep, easiest to get started and yeah. roll out. Well, hopefully this thing just keeps going and then we can uh, get some more stuff in here. Yeah, I think I'm going to kickstart just vehicles myself because I have so many path uh, enforcers and pathfinders. Yeah, yeah. They said there's soon there's going to be a choice for a vehicle only pledge, which would be nice. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went out on the early bird for the uh, for the what do they call it the advanced warfare. So yeah, yeah. Well, you know the the, the what is it? There was another one. These are all early birds. Yep. There's the warfare, and then there's advanced warfare. That's all they have so far. So yeah, was, was there a hundred dollar one somewhere like one twenty five? Yeah, 125 is the one. That's the advanced warfare, and then 50 is the warfare, which is just the books, and uh, yeah. I think it's just the books. Yeah. Yeah, the 125 is a good one. So anyone looking to get in on this Kickstarter, uh, 125. If you feel it's a little too much, you get your friend, you split it because you can get two player starter sets and all the rule book is for that. So it's a good way to get in on a, on the Kickstarter, you know, at half price. Yeah, the, and the enforcers and forge fathers you get for the uh, what is it called Operation Heracles here. Mm-hmm. There's, it's a good selection of guys there. Yeah. See, the Forge Fathers, we don't have Forge Fathers for uh, Dead Zone. That's the only faction I think we don't have, other than Mars, the Martians. But uh, So we might go in for that just to get some uh, Forge Fathers in there. Yeah. Well, we you could do that. If you want to do that, Rob, we will... Uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll go Habsies with you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what other options we might be getting here. Well, there's Hopefully. an Advanced Warfare 3 still. That's for 120, and that's still got about 155 left. Yep, so if you want to get in here, get in there. You get save five bucks. And, uh, yeah, hopefully they uh, get the Asterians, because I really like the concepts of that Asterian tank they showed. Yep. And I really want that. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we can push this up into the uh, higher digits to get some more stuff coming out. But, uh, yeah, as I see more and more Veermen, I like though that faction a lot, too. So it's our choice. Yeah, I'm I'm digging the Veerman. Yeah, everything they, we keep seeing from the infestation is uh, looking cooler and cooler, so it's going to be fun. That's the thing. A lot of these we're getting for infestation already, so it's just the numbers. You get more numbers in this one. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Is there any uh, thing that uh, you'd want to talk about about it, to, like the firefight and all that, the two different books that are coming sure. out? Sure. Uh, so what you're going to get in your pledge with the rulebook is you're going to get your firefight, Warpath Firefight and Warpath, I'm going to call regular for right now. Uh, so Warpath Firefight basically is your 30 to 40 man army bat, tabletop battle where, you know, one, this figure has this gun, this figure has this gun. Kind of the, the more, what, the more, I get normal, I don't want to say more normal, but the more used to type of tabletop war game that some people are used to. That's that set of rules. Yeah. Uh, it'll be, it's great for entry level. You know, you only have so many figures you want to play. You can bring your dead zone figures into it if you have enough, if you kickstarted enough dead zone that you can play, you'll be able to play Firefight. And then what Warpath regular becomes the more epic scale battles, the larger, you know, hundreds, yeah, almost, hundreds, 150, 200 f- figures on the table. Yeah, almost like the Kings of War for sci fi. So it's yeah. like large. Um, yeah, large battles, you know. Large, more vehicles, things like that. If um, there was talk, I don't know if you listened to the, la- the latest Mantic North America, there was talk with Ryan talking about maybe even making a 10 millimeter figure 
or figure, a 10 millimeter version of the Warpath regular. Yeah, a lot of people seem to want that smaller scale. Yeah, I, really? I'm just thinking, I mean, with the ten, you know, I do like the 10 mil because you could put literally 10,000 points with the quote unquote figures on the table and have on the same size table and have that big of a battle. Yeah. And it's, yeah, there's quite a few games like that, like the, what is that, uh, the one for World War II is about that scale. And, uh, yeah, it seemed you can get a lot more on there, the little little stands of guys. and mm-hmm. It just, so. uh, it's, they're so small, you can't see any details. So that's my point with 10 millimeter, a little too small <laughs> for my tastes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a different type of game, that's for sure. I mean, uh, I, I like it occasionally from time to time, but it's not my number one love. Yeah. My number one level will probably be Warpath regular because I do like the bigger book, the bigger battles. That's that's something that'd be very fun to play. Nice big mat with a bunch of guys going at each other. Yeah, and then one of the biggest difference too is like with Firefight, it'll be just more like I kill you, you kill me. One of the core differences with Warpath regular is that it's going to be more of a, a taking control type of game. You know, yeah. more like a modern warfare where you go from building to building, you get your team in that building. You get that team in this on all four corners of the building. You hold down your fire path lane so you can continue to take more and more of the table over. Yeah, not so much just throwing guys at each other. It's more more tactical, I guess. Yeah, say. so that's one of the biggest difference between firefight and warpath regular. And if you have all that lovely dead zone terrain right into warpath regular, you know, you start making buildings upon buildings and. Yep, for sure. Yeah, and with the figures you already have, you can go between uh, all three games. Uh, dead zone all the way up, uh, depending on what time you have, what uh, what you're feeling. Everything um, everything in one cohesive world, a very lived-in mantic world, which I really appreciate. Yeah, I mean, you can even go so far as to uh, have a kind of, I hate to use this word campaign, but a story with your friends where you start either small and work your way big, you know, or you go big, work your way down to small. Yeah, you have, like, side missions that you have to play in Dead yeah. Zone, and then mm-hmm. huge battles that you play in Warpath. Yeah, or then you have, a, a like, a skirmish firefight of, uh, off to the side. Yeah, yeah, that's very, a lot, a lot of open, opens a lot for uh, for that kind of, uh, yeah, cinematic, yeah. cinematic uh, play. You know, it's one of the things that we wanted to do when we went took a step back from Warpath, was we wanted to flesh out the universe, and I think we did that with Dead Zone. We did that a little bit with Dreadball, and now we're here at Warpath. It's time to... You know, open it up. Yep, and it's uh, it's definitely fleshed out. There's quite a bit of background now for uh, the world. Yep, and then you know there'll be some books. There's been talk, some books. Yep, and they already had the first one there. Yeah, that was that was that added a lot for sure. Yeah, a lot of background, and uh, yeah, the, hopefully we get uh, some more armies. I, I know man, uh, Ronnie was saying that uh, that'd be a future Kickstarter, so more, maybe more armies. Yeah, because, you know, again, it comes back down to what we had before versus what we want. You know, um, a lot of the, say, Marauders, which is my team. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Yeah, they're all they're all still Restic. Uh, yeah. So Ronnie's still making a push to hard plastic. So anything that we do will be making will be to making more new tools for hard plastic. So. Yeah, and I'm sure that costs a pretty penny, so it's, yeah. it's a big you know, step but, forward. But once you get it, you have it. Yeah. Yep, and it's, uh, like you said, with uh, Kings of War, the same thing happened. It was only a few armies, the first Kickstarter, and then mm-hmm. blew up in the second one. So yep. that's a, a lot of people want everything now. I think that's the culture right now. They don't realize it's just the first step in a much larger larger campaign yeah, of it's not, you guys doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not like we have this stuff already. You know, we still have to yeah. make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, it's... Uh, but it's hard to have th- uh, armies that, uh, since they are in the hard plastic rather than the rustic, if you had three armies that you had to do a Kickstarter with, Enforcers, Vermeen, they're excellent. They're excellent armies if you're just getting in now, if you want to get in. Those are some really interesting armies, and it's, it's, it's better than what could have been some of the alternatives if that was your, if that was the important part was they were already in the hard plastic. Yep. And and the Forge Fathers too. For some reason, I hear a lot of people are really getting into the Forge Fathers. Oh, Forge Fathers are, are, are a very good seller, you know. And there is such a good story too between the corp or the corporation and the Forge Fathers. It's hard not to have those two start. Yeah, they have a little tension, but they work together. Yeah, you know, it's like, hey, we're going to sell you this stuff, but we're not going to send you all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. 
you know? Yeah. But then, you know, hey, we like that world, so we're just going to take it from you. <laughs> yeah, and the Forge Fathers in the background have been known just to destroy whole worlds by m- out- mining them out and stuff, so that's... Yep. It's not like they're the good guys. <laughs> yeah. There is no good guys in this, really. And that's it, and that's what I like about it, too, is, you know, and then it's the corporation does it all. Just, hey, show me the do- show me the money. That's right. It's all it's all point of view, I guess, because anything, like, that's what, when we wrote the uh, short stories for the uh, plague, we always try to, like, humanize them and say, hey, they're just trying to survive. <laughs> it's not their fault that they are, you know, mutants. They, they're a whole new race, so. Yes. They're being persecuted, so it's, you can always, uh, you could turn anything to be. <laughs> persecuted. Yeah, well, you know. That's funny. It's important. They do, they do have zombies working for them now, so I'm not sure what anyone. That's true. But, uh, uh, yep, and um, let's just see here. We have some uh, questions we might to shoot at you here. All right, let me see what I can do. <laughs> First question's from me. This is, uh, well, where, where did we get the bulk of these questions from, and uh, are we going to be giving up? Shout-outs to the people who ask them, or are we just going to start uh, rapid-fire these things? We'll give shout-outs to people who ask sure. them. And, uh, most of them are from uh, Facebook, but there's been a few others. We've had some emails and things like that come in. Fantastic. So, But the first one is, uh, Ronnie said this will be a mini Kickstarter, like uh, Infestation. But to, really, is it just for those couple books, or is he being coy? He expects it to be much more, right? I think so. I think, you know, I mean, one of the things, though, that we're trying to get away from is the huge buy-in pledges. If you notice in this Kickstarter, the highest pledge is 150 I know. I was just disappointed I was going to buy the huge buy-in pledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they just don't really do that much for us. Yeah. And we would rather have more people buy than one person give, you know, hundreds of dollars. And it's I'm sure it's also more confusing. The more pledges you have, people get confused, and then they... A lot of people just fall off because they're, I don't know what to do. Yeah, so, I mean, in a sense, it's a mini Kickstarter, only because it's only on for a month. Yeah. Three weeks, I guess, right? Yeah, the 11th, October 11th, I think, is yeah. the last day for it. And then, you know, the buy-ins are fairly low, and there's not much difference between price-wise, you know. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, it's a, there, there's definitely a great deal. Like, that's, Mantic's always been known for the great sure. deals and, for the Kickstarter. And then, and then, you know, again, it goes back to just fleshing out the sets that are already in hard plastic. Yeah, just adding a bit more. Adding yes. more, so you can get your Forge Father tank, you can get your Vermin Tunnler, you can get your uh, Enforcer variant uh, transports, stuff like that. You know. Yeah, and uh, we've already well, we've seen rules for Plague and Corporation, so I assume, like in the Alpha, I assume they'll be they're on the list for sure to be coming up. If we can push some some stretch goals. Yeah, right? I think in the source book, there, oh, you know, because while we haven't really put them in the Kickstarter, there's still a fair amount of Warpath figures out there of Marauders and Corporation, and there's a ton of Dead Zone. Yeah, like Plague. There's Plague. Like Plague. You could build one. Yeah, because you can get the the support sets. So I think in the in the Warpath source book, you will have there should be lists for those armies, because we still have figures for them. Yeah. And uh, so far we've seen the Forge Father and uh, Asterian Tank we saw the uh, concept for, and of course the Enforcer Flyer. Uh, Do you know of any other vehicles that we might be showing up in this? There is, well, we said the Forge Father one, right? Yeah. Uh, As far as I know, there was, we talked about a Tunneler for the Vermin. Oh, yeah, to... to, uh, like transport, like a transport for them. Yeah, so you know they come in from underneath. That'd be interesting. Like That'd be cool movie. if it was like, like the mole man. Yeah, <laughs> and if it was like coming half out of the ground or something, that'd be neat. Yeah, so I mean that that was the talk. That, yeah, hopefully that's, that's not set in stone. It makes sense. You do have that. Is that they don't have a hard plastic vehicle shown yet? So no, and it might be a stretch goal. Quote, wink, wink. No, <laughs> I'm sure it will be. We've already seen the Forge Father one. They just broke the Forge Father one. So yeah, I saw that. That Forge so, Father tank looks pretty awesome, though, I'll be honest with you. And I like it, the uh, transport version, too. Yeah. Without the turret. Uh, and, I've, uh, we, I've seen a picture of it in scale with the Forge Father, so I would say it's about eight inches long. Oh, yeah, so it's quite large. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we finally get to have use for our, all the crazy boxes. We have tons of Yotans and uh, hopefully eventually the uh, Marauder vehicles with the Raptor and things like that. Oh, we yeah, well, I'm sure those, those. Uh, those, uh, those cannons will come into play. In the rules, I haven't seen I haven't seen them in any of the alphas yet. Yeah, uh, but 
again, it's out there. There's a ton of fi- ton of figures. I mean, I know we have a bunch laying around. I think I have like eight or nine sitting in a, in a <laughs> box somewhere around here in my in my office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those they're pretty cool. They were like one of the first vehicles that uh, Mantic made. So yeah, be good to have them show up. It'd be a nice little artillery piece, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, is there anything else about Warpath you can think of right now? Not off the top of my head. Let's uh, let's do another question. Let's go right into the questions from our fans then. And the first one's from our number one fan, Linda Ackerman or uh, Daria Winter. She's uh, she asked uh, first of all, are there rules in, uh, for Plague, despite not being in the Kickstarter? But you already answered that one. You said that most likely those all those other armies will get uh, some nods in the uh, rule books there. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, there she was also wondering if there's going to be faction books like uh, like separate books. Or just going to have them all in the original book? Um, that honestly, that I don't know. I, I don't want to say that we would be producing books left and right. Yeah, Mantic tends not to do that, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> we don't, and so, um, but we also have had quite a few armies out. Say, for instance, the King's War. You know, it mm-hmm. was easy enough to include all those. So, but I don't see why we wouldn't put a one army book out because it's just the kind of thing we do. You know. Yeah, just have all the lists we in there. We don't want to put separate books out for separate armies, because then... That's yeah, you just... kind of learn that from Kings of War, by having yeah. the Basilian as a separate one, you, then you were like, no, it's better just put it all together. Yeah, because there's no hidden... You know, you shouldn't be penalized for not knowing how to play against an army, because you couldn't pay $35. Yeah, for, you're not playing that for, army. For an so army that you're not playing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But with, and, with Mantic, they're... Uh, everything's online anyways, so it's... It, even if they did decide to break the books up, put them online in a PDF, different armies, different books. Costs no one anything. It's just convenient. You can print it out at home if you want. Yeah. Yeah, you buy the book for the fluff. That's That was the best thing about yeah. the... Uh, and, one, and one thing we should also point out, too, is just remember, we are still only in the alpha rules. This is not even going to happen until next year, around yeah, September. Right. So, who know, you know, what we could be talking about now could change by December. Yeah. Well, it already has changed from the original Alpha. They've added the firefight, so yeah, so things are changing all the time. Yeah, so I just, you know, just stress any answers that we give today <laughs> could change well, six months down the road. <laughs> I think our listeners know we're not the source of information. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's better places to get true information. <laughs> this is just to uh, answer the questions people have had. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Daria also asked about multi-basing for Warpath. Is it is firefight supposed to be more like single models in like firefight supposed to be more single models and warpath will probably be more kind of a, a basis a base ish type game. Yeah, so you might want to magnetize or something to put them because it's going to be movement trays maybe and yeah, roughly. I mean, I think what again it goes back to if you played the old version of Epic 40k, it it it'll play a little bit like that. Which you neither know. Jack and I have played. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's lost on us. It's a reference we yeah, don't get. But that was, it was I'm sure ten, our listeners understand. It totally. was a ten millimeter. It was a ten millimeter game. You had five guys to a base. Was a squad. Oh, so it's yeah, it's just like uh, Flames of War and things like that. Yeah, roughly like that. Yeah. Yes. They and once again they just stopped making them. <laughs> Which one, Epic or? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was one of those games that just went straight to specialists. Yeah. So it, yeah. Much so, like. Much, much like anything else. Yeah, but that the, was a good question. That's that's a very interesting question that I hadn't even thought of. That's, yeah, and I I know they the other companies like are making bases like um uh, uh movement trays, but not in squares. They're like random shapes, kind of almost, which is interesting because it's not like you have to be in a square. You just have to have a hub, right? So yeah, I think so. So again, as the rules as we move from alpha to beta, that'll probably be more clear. Yeah, and clarify as we as we play and play more games, figure out what's working, what's not working. Even that alpha, it was uh, it was almost a beta. Like how much it was done. Like other than pictures, like yeah, it was I, I feel like complete. It was still a pretty tight set of rules, that's for sure. Yeah, well, of course they're sort of basing them off of the, the first version, but I'm sure it's changed a lot since then. Yeah. And here's another question from uh, Ray uh, Ridicher. Is is the rules uh, update going to include Mars attacks factions? If so, will we get dead zone rules for Mar- Ma- uh, Martian Judge Dread this time around and things like that? Because I guess they want uh, rules for all their Mars attacks figures. For- sure. Um, honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. Personally, I would probably say no. 
I would think there's like uh, legal there's, reasons, right? No, nah, I mean we have the license for the games to put into the games, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it's a hard, it's a tough call because there is a Martian dread uh, there is a Martian dead zone list, and we even have a dreadball team. Yeah, um, possibly. It's a yeah, but didn't they? I think in the in the fluff, didn't they come through a portal or something like that? That's the reason they're there. So they yeah. probably wouldn't have armies coming through. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that's a tough call. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't honestly know, and it's, it hasn't come up in conversation with Ronnie yet. Uh, we might and, not even be at that point yet to see where else we would include. Yeah, and don't they already have their own mass battle rules as part of Mars Attacks? Yeah, they have a new set of uh, rule book at the uh, oh, what is that now World. World at War or something. Yeah. Worldwide Invasion or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. That allows you to play Mars Attacks as a big mass battle game like that. Yeah, so there you go. Make your own rules, uh, Ray. <laughs> Make your own stat lines. Never say never, though, you know, yeah. is what I'm going to say. I mean, but at this point, I don't know, and I don't think at this point that there will be actually, a Mars. It would attack. actually be neat to for them to add... Uh, into the rules, a way to make your own faction, like, make your own, yeah, factions, like, being able to stat things up. Yeah, I mean, because then, you know, we'd have to flesh them out again more with more yeah. models, putting more tanks for them, because right mm-hmm. now they just got saucers and robots. Robots, yeah. So. Yeah. Or it's, I think most people just want it as a side thing, almost. Yeah. I mean, if it comes back down, it'll be a logistics thing. Kind of like the, um, I think a lot of people liked what you're doing with Kings of War, with those, uh, those other lists. Uncharted Empires? Yeah, so I think I think once you started doing that, everybody wanted lists for everything. Yeah, well, I mean, I did ask Ronnie that question, and, and, and I, I got I got it quite possible. Nice. <laughs> and and it's yep. it's because it, at that point, it'd be just a matter of writing rules, not providing models. Yeah, that's right. That's what I think. So. Most people probably just want that, some stat lines. Sure. And they can do it themselves, that's what I say. Use your own minds. <laughs> Creativity. That's right. Our uh, next question is from uh, Mike. Uh, there's Spieler, and it's uh, are the models in the two-player starter set going to be one piece pushed to fit on, s- or just sprues? It should be sprues because we're including the yeah. hard plastics now. So yeah, that's and, uh, one of the reasons for the Kickstarters to move to make more hard plastic tools for everyone's factions. And I know people like those pushed to fit ones, but I don't know. Sprues is so much more variety you can make with them. Yeah, I mean, I prefer hard plastic myself, but then again, I'm more of a modeler. Yeah, that's just than a war gamer. Yeah, yeah, I guess we don't care about getting the stuff on the board right away. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Oh, another good question from Mike is, uh, will there be allies like in uh, Kings of War? And I think that'd be very interesting to have allies in uh, Warpath. Although yeah. I don't know how much everybody likes each other enough to ally. You know, in the Warpath universe, the only ally I could think of off the top of my head would be uh, Corporation Marines and Enforcers because they're on the same side. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there would be a lot of allies just because, you know, it's everyone's at everyone's throat in this game except for, you know, and then we're ready to talk about... I guess Marauders. About... Marauders, they could work for anybody. Cause well, they, they, yeah, they would probably be a, a neutral army. Yeah, maybe. You could just not like you want marauders on all your armies, but, <laughs> but you, you need them because they're the bomb. <laughs> oh. uh, but you know, uh, the Forge Fathers and the Corporation have a tenuous alliance, kind of in the sense of who's, who's so that they couldn't team up to beat back the Asterians or Plague or the Vermin, you know. And who can't say the Vermin uh, can't work with the Plague, you know? Maybe they're also immune to the Plague, as we find out later on down the line. Maybe. Yeah, that would make. That makes somewhat sense. Yeah. Well, we did see some uh, f- photographic evidence of someone play testing with a uh, Warpath team that compri- was comprised of vermin and uh, plague, if I do remember correctly. Oh yeah, a long time ago we saw that from uh, I think from the open day, yeah, Magic oh. Open Day. All right. We don't know if they're what they were doing, but yeah, there was plague and vermin on the same side, so maybe <laughs> they were just doing like mass battle with a bunch of people. So yeah, so possibly. Yeah, that'd be good. Good memory there, Jack. Yeah, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Uh, I have a I have a board dedicated to it. There's a string and pictures and uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Is that when you're uh, reading Catcher in the Rye and <laughs> yes, and writing my manifesto in a cabin somewhere in uh, Montana? <laughs> That's it. You wish you had a cabin in Montana. Do I? <laughs> our next questions from our a uh, listener called Tyler Schultz. We've had uh, questions from him before. Yes. And uh, how close are we to seeing plague vehicles in the Alpha? Because right now in the Alpha there is no plague vehicles other than uh, Striders. And uh, 
are there any more complicated models that Manta can show off, like uh, Plague Aberrations and things like that they want to uh, see shown off? Do you know anything about uh, Plague, ve- plague Vehicles? No, no, nothing on the board for Plague Vehicles at this time. Yeah. It, once again, you could just plague up the Enforcers and Forge Father stuff. Just do what they did with the uh, Striders. Yeah. Uh, again, the bulk of this Kickstarter is going to focus on the three Enforcers, Forge Fathers, and Vermin. Uh, I think when it's time to flesh out the rest of the line, i.e. Marauders, Plague, or Asterians, uh, that might be a separate Kickstarter in itself. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then at that point, then yes. I'm sure there will be plague tanks. It's like there'll be Marauder tanks or Asterian tanks, which we've mm-hmm. you know seen a sketch of already. That makes sense. Like like you say, you can't build everything all at once. Yeah. As much as everybody wants that. And uh we have two a question from two different people I had the same question. That's Lake uh Tagan and Andrew Sharp. Both uh they want to know if the new models unlocked in Warpath will have some dead zone rules for them. Like uh I think there's the new Vermin. The creepers? I don't think they're in dead zone. The no, not yet, not yet. Uh, I would probably say yes because again, we're in the middle of alpha testing the new version of dead zone. Mm-hmm. And um, if we're making a model for it, then definitely there'll be a stat line for it in dead zone. Yeah, since you guys seem to be going from cards to stat lines, it's so much easier to add anything into that new book, right? Yes. So that'd be great. And Tony Hopkins, our friend who made lots of uh, terrain, he uh, has a question. And uh, he said, will there be a similar thing to King's War where other companies, quote-unquote, models will get uh, stats for Warpath? <laughs> kind of like, once again, that uh, obvious yeah, and, one. Yeah, and we touched on that a little bit. You know, I, I don't see that it would not happen. My because, question is... If because there's... then it's just a matter of writing rules and not making figures. But you got to avoid the legal wrangling of that kind of thing, right? That's Yeah, I mean... As long as you don't call them whatever. Yeah, exactly. We don't have to, you know, I mean, if you've seen all the King's War lists, they're all... Yeah, but they're pretty generic fantasy kind of things. Yeah, so, and then we could do the same with... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. You know, I mean... Yeah, because really... All, honestly, the majority of the of 40K, I guess, is Space Marines anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, but, you yeah, just, things use like, your, just use the Enforcer list. And things like uh, Necrons, they're kind of like Terminators almost, aren't they? yeah. And then you got well, what's just your, robots, I guess. And, and then you got the plague, like one, the um, or the bugs, they're more like bugs, right? What's your, I don't even know any of the forty kicks, tyrannids, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure there's they're much like aliens from Alien, anyway. So yeah, you so can always you can do generic alien bug thing, and, or you got the Zor to do too. Yeah, I mean, if anything, if there's enough enough requests for it, then I'm sure we'll put a book out. That'd be cool. And I think that uh, gets all of our questions from our. Or listeners, but uh, I do have another question, and it's not about Warpath Kickstarter, and hopefully this will bring a lot more discussion here. But uh, we've heard that you've been playing the new Dead Zone rules. Oh. <laughs> and so spill the beans, Pat. What can we expect? Um, well, you know, Ronnie's already talked a little bit about it. They've played a fast game. So, again, we're we're losing cards. Everyone knows that already, right? Yes. we see. going to stat lines. Um, it hadn't been official yet. We had heard, we were told, we've been... Uh, Ronnie told us at Defcon that it was Yeah, we've been telling it <laughs> yeah. on our show, but I, it ha- wasn't made official. At this point, we knew. we're moving from cards. Just because, honestly, uh, as the game sits now, if you play a, a campaign, after you level up a guy, then your cards become null and void anyways, because now they're not the same as what the level up guy is. Yeah. And it allows for a lot more variety in guys, too, just having a stat line. Yeah. Um, we talked about command dice in the last podcast, so I can mention that. So instead of a, a deck of hands, you're going to get a, 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 your command pool will become dice. Kind of like cash Warpath? in. Uh, that you can cash in. Uh, there'll be one through five and then a mantic splat. Basically, the mantic splat will be your faction's special power. Hmm. So you get to do a little bit more variety in what you can do? Yeah, so, I mean, for example, if you roll 1, 2, 5, or one, let's say 1, 5, 6, on the chart, 1 will be like plus 1 to fight. Mm. 5 will be uh, an extra action. And then the splat will be a special power. For enforcers, it's, uh, I forget what it's called. I think it's called marker light. Uh, but where you, it allows you to light up a target 
and then anyone that shoots at that target now gets plus one to to shoot. No, that's interesting. And and it's uh you can assign like for those plus one fight. Is it for everyone or you just assign? Well, you you get that or? dice pool. So when you want that model to have plus one fight, you take that dice out of your pool and you put it up the side. Oh, I see. So you're cashing in dice instead of cards. Mm. Hmm. Well, that would clean up uh, having too many cards on the uh, table. That's for sure. Yeah. Which has been my uh, one of the rules we've discussed in our we've done a series on uh, things that we would change and things that we'd look forward to. And I know you guys are big on the initiative, so I can actually tell you now that uh, initiative goes away and it becomes a truly becomes a you go I go type game. With it single models you go I go. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It gives it a lot more uh, chance of single guys being able to do something. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'll, I'll mull it over. <laughs> we'll have to see how it plays out. Again, that's how it is right now. And then we still, I don't think, you know, we're still alpha and rolling, but yeah. the, the times I played, that's how, that's how we, we, the rules were to be. Yeah. And, uh, speaking of alpha and beta, is there any time frame when we might be able to see a beta coming up? Uh, I don't know the, the time frame for that. Um, uh, like again, we're still playing around with the rules, or the rules committee is still playing around the rules, and I'm just playing the games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just play testing for them. Yeah, yeah, it's neat. Well, we, we uh, knew it was going to be a big change, and it's nice to see. Like uh, on Jake's will, blog, I, he's put. I a lot will of tell stuff you, up. it is it is a much faster game. It is much bloodier because now you're just killing people left and right. <laughs> that was promised to us at the beginning, so it's nice to see that coming along. Yeah. Um, it's still, and, you know, those of us that have played it here in the Chicago era, it still has the dead zone feel to it. We were a bit worried when we first read it that, that it wasn't going to feel right. Yeah. Uh, but it still feels like dead zone. The story's still there. The the narrative play kind of comic book in my brain while we're playing the game look is still there. There's a lot of chance for, like, epic moves. and cause that was always yeah. the best part. Some guy would, ju- like, a dog would jump out and kill a Terraton or... Much yeah, my chagrin. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen uh, a goblin sniper take out a strider. So, oh wow, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Since goblin snipers are almost useless. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, you can talk to uh, JP about that. He lost his strider <laughs> to a goblin sniper. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like there's a lot more chance of uh, epic swings, and that's kind of what you wanted of a quick skirmish game. Yeah, I think the chaining is gone too. So. Where you just, one guy just starts destroying everybody? Yeah. That's pretty good. And I assume there's some point rebalancing and stuff that they're going to happen for things? Yes, definitely. Yeah, that was something that was obviously needed. Yeah. So, but it's moving in, uh, it's moving in, in a positive direction. Yeah, everyone, I think we've, yeah. everyone that I know that's played, that we've tested it with, they've been all like, oh, yeah, this is actually better. Yeah, that's everything I've heard about it. Just everybody's raving about it, so anybody who's played it so far. So it sounds good. It sounds like we we're stepping in the right direction towards uh, an improvement to the game. Yes, definitely. So it's it's uh there, there it's was something always, to look forward to. There was always room for improvement. The, the the original game was was fun and we played it and uh and uh, as a first as a first go, uh it was enjoyable, but it, there's always room for improvement and the community uh input and actual play testing and it it sounds like a lot of the small nitpicks that we had are being addressed at like almost one for one at alarming <laughs> at alarming rate. It's almost it's 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 shocking the things that we kind of picked up on the, the uh, right off the hop we're hearing are being addressed. So I'm interested to see the stuff that Rob and I and and, and our fans hadn't discussed or been able to uh, like s- some things that uh, down the line that I, I go oh. I didn't even know that needed to be fixed, but this is perfect. Like that's that's what I'm waiting for to see. Maybe if, when the beta comes by, if we can get a little sneak peek or uh, something like that, where we can, uh, you know, help or give our input. I would, I'm looking forward to seeing some yeah. stuff that will just bl- blow my mind and go, yeah, I didn't even know that was needed. There's, a tweet. there's no more cover. Yeah, it's kind you're of useless either, to have cover in that kind of game. Well, you're either you're either out in the open now, or you just there's no bonuses. It was also confusing because sometimes cover would be like it would be between you and the enemy, so you'd think it would be cover, but it didn't give you cover because it wasn't in your square and things or it like wasn't, that. You didn't nominate that cube to be cover, and that yeah. was a big thing. And, and and a lot of 40k players that came to Dead Zone, they couldn't wrap their mind around it. <laughs> That's good. I in it such could, a small space, there's no point to have cover, anyways. Yeah, I mean, but 
in in a sense, it was it was straightforward though. You, you either are, or you aren't. I mean, it was, yeah. If you didn't nominate that cube, then you weren't you weren't in, even if there's a wall there, you weren't in cover. You might not be able to get shot at. Yeah, yeah. It's about line of sight at that point. Yeah. That point. So. Yep. Yeah, like the cover rules were strange. Yeah. That's for sure. So it's good that they simplified it in that way. And uh, there was something else that uh, Ronnie mentioned. I can't remember what it was now, but anyways, there's uh. It seems like it's going to be a lot faster, too, which is nice. It is. We played uh, three or four games, test games, in a span of about an hour and a half to two hours. Wow. See, that's the way we like it. It's, it's so much more fun just to get a few, lot of games under your belt. Yeah. I think the, the the win value points for games now is 12 instead of 10. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if that stayed, but that's how it was when we tried it out. Just because things are dying a lot quicker. and Yeah, and then, you know, it's... You're holding objectives. That's the base base game. You're trying to grab objectives and score points. Yeah. So. Which, which these speedier games are are fun for at home amongst your friends. Maybe if you're going doing the campaign, you can you know make a lot of headway. But also, speaking of uh, of fast games and and tournaments, tournament play is it? Do you think the game's being tweaked a bit to make uh, tournament play uh, more of a more of a viable option than it was, say, even when we were at Adepticon last year? Uh, that, honestly, I don't know. I just I haven't played enough of the game yet to know how it would work in a tournament setting. Okay. Um, again, we have to see how the rules evolve and where they land before I can properly answer that question. Uh, while we did have a Dead Zone tournament last year, the Dead Zone rules, the way it were, they are now, really don't lend itself to be a very good tournament type game. Not amongst uh, uh, highly competitive people. Not against yeah. uh, uh, like tournament players, the, the um, stereotypical. Yeah, yeah, no, and you know, those guys are, they play to, to play to win so it's it's it, it's hard to, to make that. Yeah, because it's more of a story. You want to build a fun story out of it, not just destroy each other in cheap ways or Yeah, so uh, we're going to take a step back, wait to see how this pans out, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I mean, I would like to see a Dead Zone tournament. I mean, I, I love the game that much that I would like to see it as a tournament setting. But it has to work. You know, I, I don't I don't want to put out a, another tournament like I did last year. But it's almost like you don't even need to do a tournament. You could do what we did on uh, the Mantic Night there, just play. Like, that's so much more fun. And at yeah. the end, you just nominate who played the best or whoever survived. or Sure. Do it that way instead and instead of making it so competitive, I think. Yeah. You've got other games for competitive play. You have that's Kings of War. You have Warpath eventually. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I do. I do. Uh, when I look at these conventions and plan and how what events we want to run, I do lean towards having Dead Zone be more of a scenario type event. Yeah, like you're, you know, you, you've built come, a few scenarios. Yeah, that were really come fun. here, play the zombie scenario yeah. for a couple we're, hours, then come back and play the the Strider scenario that JP wrote. That was pretty yeah. awesome. Or with the get to the ship one, or the your Christmas one was really interesting with the uh, oh with the five <laughs> the five one yeah yeah like those kind of things I think that's that's the way to go more of a almost a I guess a demo but it's more just for fun yeah because yeah just to show that game is not it's not meant to be a competitive game you know no it is it isn't really at this point uh, it might it might be it's hard to say again yeah. Well, we definitely would rather see it not go competitive because then you you get those kind of people. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But uh, still, yeah, it's all, at home. It doesn't matter anyways. You play it the way you want. Exactly. And we do love those wacky scenarios, so we hope to see the more of those in the future. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I'll start pumping some more out of you again here come holiday season. It's almost Halloween. I think we need a Halloween one for me, Pat. Oh, I, yeah, I have kids <laughs> up with work first before they think of the scenarios. <laughs> I'm so far behind. Canadian Thanksgiving is the beginning of October. We want a Canadian Thanksgiving one. <laughs> oh, that's right. I dated a Canadian girl one time, and then we had to have Canadian Thanksgiving. It was just so weird. <laughs> it's too early for you? Well, it was like October, and I was like, why, why are we cooking turkey? Uh, like, you know, like a whole turkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the counterpoint to that is I'm dating an American, uh, and she, when we have our the American Thanksgiving, we have a turkey and then christmas is around the corner and we have a turkey and i'm already like no i'm i'm done turkey no more turkey no yeah, more that's turkey. why you normally like christmas i do a ham just because of that yeah no, variety okay. variety is good yeah and who doesn't like a good ham <laughs> it's mm. true 
<laughs> couple religions. Uh... <laughs> okay, sure. There's a percentage of there's the a, population. There's, there's a small percentage, you know. And we're not going to call. Them. I'm not going to say they're wrong, but it's a good ham. <laughs> yeah, ham's tasty. You know, I mean, you just haven't tried it. That's, That's all. <laughs> you know? To try it is to love ham. You know, maybe take that year off like the Amish do. Experience right. the ha- experience the ham. You might then, you might then, stay. Yeah, then decide. <laughs> then decide. So are are you suggesting a a pork based a rum springer where uh, people just imbibe <laughs> in all manner of bacon's and and, and and they just you know okay uh, it's not for me and then go back. Yeah, why not? You know, nobody who eats bacon can go back. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you know. <laughs> they'd never allow that. They'd have nobody in their religions. Granted, we're talking you know gr- you know groundbreaking. <laughs> So. That certainly that certainly would uh, would change some some world politics. I'm telling you right now, there <laughs> world peace, the, the the community pat plan for world peace. Oh yeah, over I, I'm on board. After a bone-in spiral ham, honey glazed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that brown sugar on the top. Just right. Busted. Yeah. Some sweet potatoes. Oh my God, you're done. What's what's the, what's there to fight about? What were we fighting about? Exactly. <laughs> we had this ham. That's true. And really, where can we go from here? I think that might uh, wrap up this discussion. Because <laughs> where do you go from ham? Yeah, uh, yeah I, think we, I think we've touched on all the bases and some that we probably shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to say thank you to uh, Community Pat for, uh, for joining us. And uh, th- well, we've had a very interesting discussion. We've learned some stuff. Um, and yeah. we've got a Kickstarter that's happening as we speak. Yeah, get in on it. Uh. Get your enforcers, get your forge fathers, get your vermin. Get all of which the, look amazing. Yeah, get in with your buddy. Split a split a set. I mean, you just got to go to the to the Kickstarter page and look at these jet bikes, man. <laughs> when the beta for Dead Zone comes out, we might have to have you back on, and we'll talk about it for uh, some more in depth about uh, your thoughts on it. Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, until then, thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll go to a commercial break. And we'll be back with the rest of the show. Thanks for having me on, as always, guys. Thank you. It is time for a brief message from our friends at Iron Watch Magazine. Do you like Mantic Games? Do you want to read about your favorite games in a monthly magazine? Have we got the offer for you? Iron Watch Magazine. Iron Watch brings you the latest news, articles, and short stories taking place in the Mantic Universe. Dreadball, Kings of War, Dead Zone, Warpath. You want it? They got it. Ironwatch.wordpress.com. Get it now for the low, low price of free. You can't beat that at twice the price. That's Ironwatch.wordpress.com. Download now. We now return to the Dead Zone Podcast. And we're back. Again, fantastic. Thanks, thanks Pat, for being on because he was a great interview. And uh, he's he's our man, unless he was really mean to us. <laughs> yes, our uh, our episode. There's the that's the chop shop. Uh, uh, our special our special community packed uh, forum, and it was an enjoyable yep. enjoyable conversation. And uh, I think we all learned a lot. So let's uh, move on to some shout outs. Shout outs. It is shout outs time. Jack loves shout outs. I, I, I've i waffled, I'm not going to lie, throughout my history of being on this show, at times, I've been pro shout-out, other times, not so much. It's true. Do you want to give our shout-out to uh, our guy here? To Matt Adler? Uh, yeah, we've had Matt on before. He made the mats. He made a mat. Remember the city mat? Yes, that looked very distinctly like the mats that uh, that came with the original set, but then uh, expanded on that. Uh, high quality, looked like... Um, um, Yep, and they're all downloadable. And uh, he's made some more mats. Okay. And uh, this one is called Gravelite. And it's just pretty much gravel with a cool design in the middle. Nice plain mat. I don't recognize the symbol. Is it something that uh, I, don't recognize I should the symbol know? Either. Maybe he might be summoning Cthulhu. We're not sure. Well, there's no harm in that. No, no, no one's ever been harmed by summoning Cthulhu. Matt, if you're summoning Cthulhu, uh, just put in a good word. And the next one's called the next one is called ceramic, which is ceramic. I think looks a lot like what you've been doing with your bases. That would yeah. almost match perfectly. Yeah, and now it looks like those uh, those glyphs are actually carved into the yeah into the ceramic into, tiles. It looks like concrete that um, yep. 
So I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Matt or Matt Dagan Allard uh, <laughs> has something to uh, to admit. And he's also done some more roads, so there's a nice straight. Yeah, and I, I like that. That looks like it would blend right in with uh, Matt's... Uh, and I like how um, he's doing more roads. We got a nice little curvy one. Ooh, yeah, but uh, someone set up an ambush on that curve. <laughs> he does Matt clean and dirty versions of all these ones. We got a crossroads. And... Well, when we're street racing our... Uh, uh, jet bikes, Our yeah. jet bikes, we'll know. We'll, we'll have to promote some mats. Yep, another crossroads. And we got another straight, clean and dirty ones. So thanks, Matt. Thanks for making them. Thanks for showing them to us. And, and uh, uh, please go to uh, his site. It will be on the uh, web or on the uh, on our website. You can go to his link and you can download all these in our show notes. In our show notes. That's the word I was looking. For. Yeah, I knew it. And now we'll move on to our stuff. First thing in our stuff, I'd like to announce there's a we have a new blog. We really? Well, I have a new blog. It's called Fallen Infantry, and you can go to falleninfantry.wordpress.com. And it's just pretty much pictures of unboxings. I have so many unboxings. We were going to do a video originally, but then uh, my video editor, thanks to Windows 10, crapped out. So now I've just made a blog up. So it's just photos. If you ever want to see what's in a box of any of the stuff we've made or we've unboxed there's, any of the stuff. There's two things Rob loves. Buying and showing everyone his <laughs> So there you go. It's more editing up. <laughs> And then I also painted up the, finally painted up the VTOL from Mad Mecha Guy. You've been working on that for quite some time, making it just so, and, and look at that. I made it with some markings on it. It looks good. It's pretty clean. I didn't want to dirty it up too no, much. No, no. And you know what? A lot of the stuff we do uh, it is dirty. We've built a world that's war-torn, and all our scenery, our guys, there's nothing really clean. That looks like it could be uh, from a hospital, like paramedics. I would say more of a FedEx vehicle. Oh, because <laughs> it's because it's a uh, has cargo containers. What can bright white do for you? That's right. Well, FedEx actually, I I, I did it just like a FedEx vehicle. It's a uh, FedEx uh, planes are white with green tails. That's what I did. Oh, and uh, there it is with the propellers. You've made it modular because it did have the ability to do yep. the uh the the magnetic uh, the jets. I guess what are the yeah, afterburners? Jets. Yeah, jets or, jets or those or with the turbine. Props. Yeah, props. So there you go. Have you uh? Very nice. Have you done any painting, anything like Dead Zone? You've been working mostly on Kings of War stuff. So. I've been uh, been busy. I've been unable to really get to too much Kings of War. I I did do some painting, some modeling, uh, but nothing Dead Zone related. Sounds like uh, I'm gonna have to wait till apparently a new Kickstarter. The Warpath. Yeah. Yep. We'll see what's going on. You. Yeah. You might have to think of a new plan for the for the. Uh, Plague color scheme because you don't want to paint them all green again. No, or maybe I do. I don't know. You might go back to it. You finally you've gotten over your aversion to painting things green. The thing is, uh, I have my Wrath of Kings Hadros that I'm yeah. turning into Abyssals, Cthulhu esque Abyssals. Um, wow, it's getting. It's, uh, this is the Cthulhu episode. The, um, much like Kickstarter, you just can't get enough Cthulhu. It's true. Um, where was I going? Oh yes, and they, they've yeah. So I've uh, I, I've been painting abyssals, and they've had an they've got an aquatic blue green uh, appeal. So I, I've I've lost my aversion. I've I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of wet blending and stuff. And when I first got the my plague, I was just dry brushing, and apparently no one does that anymore because it was coat after coat. Start with a gray, then go up to a blue, then go up to a green. Well, you weren't even dry brushing. You were like just layering. Like, dry brushing is one thing. That's like a finishing thing just to add some highlights. You were like layer upon layer and layer. Yeah. Like, if you took it like a microscope on those miniatures, you'd probably see like kaleidoscopes of colors. And Yeah. And I, I've, now I don't do that anymore. I've got the Reaper paints. They're fantastic. Better quality, yeah. And it's changed the way I do painting. I'm not in the early 90s anymore. And I think I could enjoy trying some plague. So, yeah. Yeah. How do we how do we get onto that? Oh, what, 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 yeah, because we're going to be painting anticipating a some new Kickstarter. Yeah, and uh, I think that might wrap it up for us. That was a uh, this is going to be a good episode with Pat and the whole Warpath stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's certainly a full episode. We've, yeah, uh, we've been enlightened. We've got some uh, we've got some stuff on the way, and um, so please go to Kickstarter and back Warpath support Mantic. Even if you just want the miniatures, because I'm sure there'll be a lot of pretty miniatures. Lots of pretty miniatures. We know. We know this guy over here. He will. Yes. They, this might be the one I go big on. But oh dear. Usually I don't go big. I go like the the sweet spot. This one I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Because I know uh, uh, Mark Zelinsky did that with Kings of War. 
and he got every army, mega de- mega army of every single one. It was pretty crazy. But, uh, well, well, we'll have to uh, see how it goes. We're going to invite you all back for the uh, next episode of uh, the Dead Zone podcast, which will be uh, kind of a kind of an intervention uh, for Rob, <laughs> where we all tell him to stop buying so much stuff. I've been Jack, and I'm the guy who buys stuff. And this has been Dead Zone the podcast. Thank you for listening to the Dead Zone podcast. I have been your announcer, William Randolph Wintergreen. Visit the website, deadzonegame.podbean.com. Email your hosts at deadzonepodcast at gmail.com. On Twitter, you can follow the show at Dead Zone Podcast. The Dead Zone Podcast is a production of Vinland Old Time Radio Productions. Ahoy, hoy. So, are you going to try the uh, the call core or whatever, whatever the thing is that you do? What? What? Call oh, call, call call note. Call something. Call note. Yeah, it's running right now. Ah, okay. You're you're being recorded as we speak. But I better be more articulate rather than going that call call thing that you do. Call <laughs> call, call. Yes. Uh, I'm not prepared. Prepared. Like I. <laughs> you have I to like lubricate and yes I need to spread out my beach towel and uh, <laughs> get uh, Ashley Olsen pictures available but then after that I'm good Ashley Olsen Scarlet Witch yeah is it Scarlet Witch I, I don't know I, I it was funny just to say an Olsen that's why I didn't know if it was one of the Olsen twins or because uh, I, did, I didn't think I needed to elaborate I don't know which one it is Mary Kate and, yeah it's one of the twins Mary Kate and Ashley is the twins is the other? Elizabeth Olsen is Scarlet Witch okay so that's funny I approve of that message. You you approve of that? <laughs> I approve that joke. You know, see, the last time you said it was recording, it, it sounded like ass. Is it recording well? Does someone need to step back, step forward? No, talk, it sounded good. Talk louder? Okay. It was just us that when we recorded, right? Not when Pat was with us. Yeah, but still. You're, you're, you're like a giddy child whenever Community Pat's on, so I just need to... That's, i got to make sure everything's great for him. And I'm back. How do I sound? Do I sound... How are my dulcet tones? Everybody sounds great. Okay, want to get right into it? All right, let's roll. Jack, you want to bring us in from a commercial? Let's roll. Uh, in from a commercial? Yeah. Okay. You're asking me to come in from a commercial? You're asking for me to, to play the audience. That's fine. Oh, okay. This is, this is the time to play the audience, Jack. <laughs> okay. You have been listening to the Dead Zone Podcast. And now... A word from the fine folks at Vinland Old Time Radio. Vinland Old Time Radio. Ah, it is to that. Fast row! Boy, they're dirigible. Help a fellow Empire citizen out with you. It's a gavel. A haunted gavel. Oh. Have you read The King in Yellow? Hello, William. I made the koala burgers. So, what's new? Are you insane? That better be a rhetorical question. And yes. For far too long. Uh, I once knew a Spaniard in Tarragonda who spoke in gibberish like you. Up, up, and escape! Oh, uh, that was terrible. I should be a god, and instead I'm stuck down here like a worm. She would tell me such wonderful stories. Dr. Deja Vu will return. Africa's a continent? It's with great protest. Ooh, now that's some fine programming. Linlin Oldtime Radio dot Podbean dot com.